We'll start out with a reading from Matthew chapter 3, verse 13 through 17. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented, and when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. The next reading is from Isaiah, chapter 42, verses 1 through 9. Here is my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him, He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth, and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God, the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. The word of God. So, good morning. Um, This weekend, about the baptism of Jesus. So, I'm going to get right into the readings we just heard. Um, The reading from Matthew, I think, is pretty obvious. It's one thing I like about the uh, book of Matthew, is he's really straightforward. He doesn't really beat around the bush much. I mean, when he talks about, like, uh, Jesus' birth and everything, he's just like, yep, they went to Bethlehem and Jesus was born. Okay, moving on. Um, So that's pretty obvious what he says. But the reading from Isaiah, like a lot of, you know, Old Testament, kind of typical Old Testament stuff, is a little more esoteric, right? A little harder to wrap your head around. Um, And one of the things that's kind of, in my opinion, typical about the Old Testament is God being very bold and, you know, I am the Lord, that's my name, my glory I give to no other. I'm the Lord, and it's in capital letters. Um, I would like to paraphrase that. I'm the Lord, get it? I did all these things and have called you, and here's my chosen, and boy, is he going to get things right for you all here. It's pretty heavy stuff. Um, It's like you better pay attention. But what does that do with baptism, specifically the one of Jesus? The reading from Matthew is much easier to read and understand. As a matter of fact, I'm reading Matthew right now at home. Um, He's very relatable. It's in story format. To me, though, the Isaiah story is almost like he's spastic. He's just, you know, not God. God's not spastic, but, you know, the way that Isaiah is being moved to write those words. So I thought more about these in the past week and how they're related. And I had a preference to Matthew's story, very relatable. Um, But I got to have a profound respect for Isaiah's. I thought about the subject matter, tied it all together, 
And I think if I was granted a vision, like Isaiah was, about the future baptism of Christ, uh, I might fly off the handle a little bit myself. I mean, he was given a vision about the Son of God coming and then being baptized. And I think that's pretty huge. So, this week, ask yourself what baptism means to you. What it meant to you when you were baptized, if you were. What it means when you see your friends and family get baptized. What is that all about? For me, it's being spiritually cleansed. It's about coming to God with all the trappings, physical trappings, and all of your cares and worries and all that just set aside for a while. And you're quite literally, usually bathed in the Holy Spirit. I hope those of you who are at least uh, like just out of high school, if not younger, do we have any people younger than that here? What's that? Oh yeah, of course, thank you. So, I hope by now you've, you've figured out the symbolism of the river. That's where I was going with that. In other religions, too. It's mentioned so many times, going to the river to pray and things like that, about getting in connection with God, with, with spiritual things. So, it's about becoming pure. One amazing thing that Matthew writes about is how Jesus comes to John the Baptist. John's already in the river baptizing people. And the amazing thing is that Jesus walks into the river just like anybody else there in line and says to John, you need to baptize me. And John's like, whoa, hold on a minute. I should probably be baptized by you. But Jesus assures John that it's okay because he says this way we will fulfill all righteousness. So you see the connection there, the righteousness that's mentioned in each passage? It's like Isaiah's prophecy, and then Jesus mentions it. And that happens a lot in the Bible. And it's, it's pretty amazing that the people in the Old Testament, a lot of the prophets were given this forward thinking, and then Jesus did his study and was like, things just kind of fell into place in certain areas. So I want to go off on a little bit of a tangent, because I don't think that righteousness, I'm not sure what that means to some of you, um, I don't think that it's the way it's being spoke of is the way that we sometimes think of righteousness or how we mention righteousness to people. Uh, like the, the white knight in all their splendor going around and doing good deeds and everything like that, the hero, and yet might look down in disdain at those people who he doesn't think are as perfect as him. Um, I think the righteousness mentioned here is when I looked up the definition of righteousness is to be truly morally right and justifiable. Truly morally right. And that's only something that God can judge. They can't be bought or made by any of us or assigned to us our own selves because of the deeds that we do. True righteousness is earned and then granted to us by the love our actions generate. If you say someone is righteous... It shouldn't be because they're a hero necessarily, but rather because they strive to do good, whether or not there's a reward or recognition in it. It's like righteousness opposed to self-righteous behavior. I hope you're with me on that. I mean, my, my son Jacob once said to me, because he'd probably hate for me to mention this, but it's done by you know a lot of people, I guess, his age, that he likes to... Uh, download movies and things that he maybe hasn't paid for. <clears throat> and when I told him, yeah, okay, I used to do that, but I don't do it anymore. And uh, you really shouldn't do it, I told him once. And he was just like, oh, how do you sleep with your self-righteousness at night? And I said, whoa, I'm not judging you. I'm not, this, I'm not saying, you know, you're lesser than me because you do it. I just don't agree with it. So I get what he was saying about being self-righteous. I think there's too many times that people, you know, I'm going to do it this way, so you should do it too, because that's the good way. I don't think that's what's being talked about here. I think that it's talking more about being truly altruistic. Doing good things because they're good to do, not because you want to get something out of it. Okay, so I'm going to come back. Um, so Jesus being baptized and the Lord saying, this is my son. Oh, sorry. The Lord saying, capital letters, this is my son, with whom I'm well pleased. 
So that's a sign of righteousness. What is, okay, reading too much. Okay, so what is baptism for everyone else? What do you guys think that baptism is all about to you? Anybody? Committing a life to God. Committing a life to God. Jill? Mm-hmm. Like a way to start becoming closer to God? Yeah. A child of God? Mm hmm. Which is maybe one way why we prefer to baptize kids. It's not necessary, of course, but that's traditionally. Um, so you take those things the becoming a child of God, the getting closer to God, and you, you take those things and run with them. Jesus being baptized. And the Lord saying, this is my son, um, there's a reason that you think you're in with God there. It's, just, it's not just, bam, okay, you're done. You've got to take those things that mean something to you when you're baptized and run with them. So I want to leave you with that. Personally, I feel like recently I've been baptized again, I, um, not because I actually went through a ceremony about it, but I don't know, I, I kind of felt like I had a reawakening and I wanted to become closer to God. And it's about that altruism. I kind of felt like I want to do good now, not just because, you know, I'm going to get something out of it. It's going to make me feel good and all that. That's okay, but to do good because you know it's good just for the sake of it being good. So can we take those ideas that we heard, be a good human being and run with them, strive for righteousness instead of like self-righteousness? It takes work, like Shannon was talking about. You've got to pick what your heart is. But then again, I think the Lord, God, wants us to do that. Jesus as we know, was the example. Find the strength in your faith to try to stay clean and pure as much as you can and do something. You're not always going to be clean and pure. That's okay. Every time you come back to God, every time you get in the river, you can become that way again. And that gives you strength to go on from God. Amen.